means it's Friday. It's Free Speech Friday. When we kind of free wheel uh, the events of the week with people who aren't afraid to speak their mind and speak their mind freely. Joining us today, uh, the newly minted Mayor of Carterton, uh, and congratulations to him, Ron Mark. Ron, thank you for joining us for Free Speech uh, Friday. Lovely to have you on board. Pleasure, Sean. Yeah. And uh, the man he... <laughs> And with him, the man. Do your show justice. <laughs> <laughs> and the man he goes mad, and we publish often, and has his own blog site called, oh, the Daily Blog. How how original! Um, uh, broadcaster, agent, provocateur uh, from the left, Martin Bomber, Bradbury Bomber. How are you this Friday morning? You good? I'm I'm fantastic. Sure to comrades. Pleasure to be here. All right, comrades. guys. Uh, you guys are so fond of that word, comrade, aren't you? <laughs> and how's it going in Russia these days? Yeah, that's right. Well said, Ron. <laughs> the, the, gulag, the gulags are doing fine, thank you. All right. Yeah, not doing too well in Ukraine. Ron, well, you're back. <laughs> well, you're in local body politics. You've done national politics. Gosh, you've been a Minister of Defence. But Three Waters, the first tranche of that legislation, passes under urgency last night. I was saying before, in my opinion, a dark day for democracy in New Zealand, um, a dark day for local bodies in New Zealand. What is your response, Ron? Uh, well, it's going to kill off small councils like ours, and the irony is is that uh, some of us are in the best condition and have been for quite some time with our th managing our three waters this year. And I uh, just, for out of interest, say, I think... One of the great things about you know, New Zealand politics and, and that is how short people's memories are. And, and you, you being an old media war horse, sure know this. So there's so many new, young, aspiring media people come in. They don't know the history. They don't know the background. But everyone seems to forget that Three Waters really started back in Antolly's time under the previous national government. And Minister Nahuta, the top item on her work schedule was put in front of her as in, uh, by her staff when she took up the reins with a real tinge of urgency placed across it was three waters reform. And she got that briefing for the incoming minister in uh, October. And the note was she had to make a decision by November. And I actually remember telling them, I, you don't have to do this, cuz. This, this is a National Party's work, and it's wrong, you know. But people are accountable for the decisions they make, and she made the decision, and I watched those things go through. We could express the views as much as we like in coalition cabinet, but, uh, and, but people, ministers, make their decisions, and the majority at the table carries the day, and here we are. But it's a dark day for democracy, and we forget that four people died, in Havelock, not in Carterton, not in Rangiora, not, not in Clutha. And the, the weight of that commission report pointed the finger squarely at incompetence of Ministry of Health for doing this, not doing its job, and a failure in Havelock North. It did not mean, actually, that we but needed... the entire to system was stuffed and you had to throw out the baby no with the bathwater. No way in hell. And yeah. This is all part of a different agenda, and it's now going to play out. And little councils like ours will, it'll, it's going to asset strip us, and uh, we will be forced into looking at amalgamations yeah. to survive. Yeah. Martin, the other thing about this is it's now been tied up, and I'd like to think the platform played a part in, in getting the mainstream media to cover quite a few ir irregularities about the minister at the head of this. And the way a lot of these issues have been progressed in this bill was, was progressed, Martin. Would you agree with Ron, it is a dark day for democracy, it is a piece of legislation largely unnecessary, fixing a problem that we're not sure ever existed? A uh, fantastic day for democracy, Sean. Uh, of course, you know me. I wanted the government to simply nationalise and seize the water under the public <laughs> work tax, but we had to go through this process and had to go through the pretend. Wonderful day, a wondrous day. And of course, I remember the history of this. We go back to the National Party when they sold 49% of the hydro assets. And when they did, Māori then went to the tribunal and went, whoa, 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 whoa. If they're selling this asset, where is our interest in water? The Waitangi Tribunal agreed and said Māori absolutely have a, a, an interest in water and that the Crown has a responsibility to negotiate what that relationship is. Three Waters and the co-governance element in it has been a wonderful 
example of being able to put this together and let us I think it's been the, the most divisive to... thing for New Zealand society in my well, lifetime, Martin. What a, what a oh, load think, of blind I think, I think, rubbish. I think, I think the cross-burning <laughs> hatred Just of racism thought longer and louder doesn't mean it right. uh, has certainly been negative. I think that's certainly been negative, absolutely. Look, co-governance has been around for don donkey's yonks. And exactly. what's so funny, right? And, and no. national creativity. Look, calm down. God, just talking louder and longer doesn't make you right, you know? It just makes you well, noisy. Look, look, look well, the reality well, is that, that Martin, now, Martin give, the man, give the man his, his right of reply. So the interesting thing right now is that everything I'm hearing from my iwi, and, I've, and I affiliate to nine different iwi, is that they're starting to wake up to what's what's in the bill, what's in this this legislation that's going to disadvantage Māori. And the co-governance thing will be looked at as beads and blankets by historians looking back. And we will have got a whole bunch of muskets that we have no ammunition for. And what will we have done? Upset the balance of relationships in the meantime and set ourselves backwards. The thinking Māori are looking deeply into exactly how this is going to impact on their commercial ventures, their, their whānau's rates, and, and their well-being long term. And, and ironically, most of us councils now have iwi representatives at the table in one form or another on our committees. We consult and advise them. I'm the mayor who, for the very first time in the history of Carterton, introduced a memorandum of understanding with Hurunui Arangi and bought a relationship with those people they'd never, ever had before. But what this government has done has brought all that stuff into question now because people feel they've been duped, they've been ignored, they've been put down, and there's an element of racism that's been injected in that never existed here before. Thank you, Labor. Thank you, bud. Yeah. You've done a really and great I job. And I think Ron makes a good point, Martin, that this isn't a deal for co-governance by Māori in general. It's with Māori it's power elites, and they're not democratic institutions, and they don't always act in the best interest of the largest numbers of their people. Hey, Sean, I'll give you a damn good example, right? Locally here in my own Rohi, I can yeah. find in my council. Okay, so in good faith, we strike an arrangement with, uh, with local iwi, my iwi, Kahun Nui, one of my iwi, and, and we have a person appointed to advise us. Now, I leave the council and go to parliament, and in the meantime, the project which I started carries off. So we bring in this, the council then brought in this person to advise on the resource consenting process for our wastewater consent. That person agreed and signed off on a wastewater outlet going into a stream. Council progressed, regional council took the Māori submission and said, this is great, so this Māori, the iwi had been consulted, the hapu had been consulted, and everything had been done apparently by the book. But the only problem was that they weren't the Māori who owned the land. <laughs> the the, the ka, kahukura afikia. Yep. owned that land and were never consulted because Iwi, all-powerful, almighty, yeah. made the decision for them. Now, that backfired, and the person who did it has apologised profusely yeah. and regrets it immensely, but done, mm. done. So yeah. you're quite right, Sean. You know, in this day and age, I'm sorry, not all Māori are equal. Some Māori have a damn sight more leverage and say and preference to particularly this government yeah. than others. And, and then Martin, you would hate the idea of a society where not everyone was equal, wouldn't you? You're hearing my eyes roll so far into the back of my head as I listen to this conversation. Who, who created these corporate iwi um, uh, organisations? Muldoon did oh, blah, when he blah, wanted blah. to deal. Well, 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 if you want to go, go back to them, perhaps we should go back to them <laughs> and bitch about the creation what? of Martin, people. what's happened? Have they finally started paying you, the Labour Party, to just <laughs> defend the indefensible? Oh, I wish, Sean. <laughs> Jesus, I wish. <laughs> but honestly, you realise also, Martin, that this legislation, this is going to be deconstructed after the next election if the current polls are anything to go by. Oh, look, um, uh, yeah, yeah, look, look, we need better infrastructure for our water on a, cli on, 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 on a planet that is going to need more fresh water. We need to protect that sovereignty. And whatever solution they can finally get over where we can actually start doing the work that needs to be done, I'm all in favour of. Good. Good to hear. <laughs> oh, Martin, I'm inviting you now. 
I'm inviting you to come to my district. I'm inviting you to come and have a look at our wastewater treatment plant. And yes, it went through some hiccups after I left, but we've sorted that out now. And that CEO is gone. Thank God. Christchurch employed her. Good on you, Christchurch City Council. I hope things go well for you. But anyway, Martin, I'm inviting you to come to my district and have a look at our wastewater treatment plant. Have a look at the work that we've done. We're leading edge and we don't need no big brother coming in and taking our asset. The trouble with people like you is you want to centralise everything, just like the communists, just like the Russians, just like the, these, these extreme left-wing socialists. You don't think anyone's capable of making I sound mean. decisions. You've got to make all the decisions for them. You are the absolute purveyors of nanny statism, socialism and communism. And I'm sorry, it doesn't work. Look at the state of Russia. Look at the state of all of those Eastern Bloc countries. Look at the difference between those that left the Eastern Bloc and who now, now have democracies. Some fragile, some still emerging better. But the, it's, it's, Gorbachev could see it. Why can't you? And this blind, myopic adherence to ideolo ideology from the extreme left is not going to help this country in the long run. It's going to set us backwards and we'll wrong, end up like wrong. a... Okay, your turn, Martin. Wrong. Can I just say oh, no, I'm no, loving no, this? I've got to respond. Oh, no, I'm John, loving John, this. John, John, Martin, I've got to respond. But, 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 yeah, and I'll let you respond, but I'll just say allow, this is allow, fantastic. Allow me to respond. This is fantastic. Wrong. You've met a person from the opposite <laughs> side of the political spectrum who's as good at talking as you are. It's fantastic. Your turn, Martin. I'm going to sit back. Go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ron, love, if you're going to put me in a box, put me in the right box. A post-Marxist anarchist with radical environmental tendencies. Come on, champ. You can get better than that. All right. We're going to have a break now. We'll just gather your forces and then we're going to, I'm going to introduce a new topic, a very contentious topic after this. All right, uh, round two, Ron Mark V, uh, Martin Bromer, Bradbury. No, it's Free Speech Fridays and the boys are doing exactly what they should. And that is engaging and speaking freely on the issues of the day. Big issue this week, big issue this week um, is the baby, Baby W, the court order that Baby W is now under the guardianship for the duration of his open heart surgery of Starship Hospital. And we find out this morning the parents trying to interfere in the preparations making threats against the doctors as they prepare them for life-saving uh, surgery. Um, the parents and Mad Liz Gunn went on with Alex Jones, uh, shock jock in the States on Info Wars last night. Um, uh, sorry, Liz Gunn, yeah. Uh, and it's all just just seems to be mad. Uh, what's your take, take on this, Martin? I think the justice system's done the right thing. I think let's keep in mind uh, what is most important right now is that that little baby gets the urgent surgery that they clearly need and require to be able to live. That That is what our focus has to be on, getting to that point. However, I also, I'm, I, I had wished that there had been a way in some way where we could have accommodated these parents' wishes because my fear is when you have kind of fringe fear grifters like Liz, Grun, uh, Liz Gunn live streaming an event of an uplift from actually the state remote, like they're pulling the baby off the parents sort of thing. That propaganda material, I think, could spark something very dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But, uh, I mean, Liz Gunn's been trespassed from Starship. I mean, I don't know oh, yeah. how Sue Gray's still a lawyer, to be, to be honest. Uh, and they are both right. terrible grifters, and they've obviously got into the heads of these these poor parents. Um, oh, oh, absolutely. Um, but I think we have a system of justice and, and, and some appeals that can be made, and they've been made. And I'm sorry if you gave the parents, you know, if you went through all the hullabaloo of giving them the fixed yep. blood, right, you then basically, you know, they talk about the thugs veto with Molyneux and Southern and a terrible decision yep. from the Supreme yep. Court out of that. Yep. This becomes the idiots, the, the, the vax nutters veto. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And we can't Look, have no, that. No, no question. No, no, no. You're, you're right. No question. But I just fear what those images of a, an uplifted yeah. baby is going to do. Yeah. Ron, that that Ron, is really yeah. concerning. Ron, what do you make of this? Where are you on this? Yeah, it's heartbreaking all, all the way around, isn't it? It's um, you know, I'm without getting into the uh, into the hype around people who uh, are vaccine hesitant, vaccine uh, 
cautious or resistant. Um, and I have a high degree of sympathy because I've got family members who, yeah. who did not want to be vaccinated. And we just managed our relationships with our whānau mm. and, and our friends. I have also friends who were um, undergoing chemo and um, mm. you know, had immune deficiencies and we couldn't have people at the house at the same time. And we just dealt with that like adults. We didn't bar people from our home. We didn't. Mm. Uh, we didn't take those extreme measures that other people did, um, and we managed it like adults do. And 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 every and we still have our friendships. We still love our Fanonga who didn't get vaxxed, and and we still talk about those things. You know, that's the way it should be. But this case, very clear to me, Sean. You know, um, I know how traumatic it can look on television when people live stream an uplift, and it's and it's happened with Oranga Tamariki, and it's happened with everyone. But you know. What people don't lose sight of is um, people like kids like me and my my siblings when we were taken off our parents. We had to be. That's it. We had to be. And I don't care about all the wailing and the whining that goes on. And, and yes, being placed in care is not a dream position and it's not the ideal upbringing uh, at all. And, would, and none of my kids and none of my grandchildren have ever been put in that situation. We've broken that cycle. But and when the state has a responsibility the state has a responsibility. And mm. and I feel for the parents, for whatever their beliefs, whatever their views, at the end of the day, it's about the baby, it's the child. And mm. I'm sorry, the state has to do what the state has yes. to do. And I just hope that adults can find ways through you know, the conversation and the, and the healing after yeah. that. Because uh, there will have to be a healing, there'll have to be a reconciliation, and there'll have to be a reunification with the, with the child and its parents, and yeah. must go on. Yeah, yeah. well, the, the, the court order are only in place till the 31st, yeah. and for a specific yeah. purpose. I think what upsets yeah. me, me here, guys, is that it has been used by Sue Gray and, and, and the shrinking number of increasingly vehement anti-vaxxers, and, I'm, and they're conspiracy theorists. That's why Liz Gunn's been trespassed. She was saying that Starship was killing people. She's talked a lot of rubbish in the last uh, year or two, Liz Gunn, and she seems a little bit unhinged. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not what they say it is. Um, and, and I don't know, you know I'm a free speech advocate. That's why this is Free Speech Fridays. But, geez, the rubbish that some people talk. And I have to say the gullibility of New Zealanders who in any way believe someone like Sue Gray or Liz Gunn. And I'm kind of... I mean, is this a reflection, Martin, of a failing education system? Look, I think that we've all gone through a universal shared experience like COVID, and it's impacted people in very different ways. Suddenly, the regularity of their lives had been horribly disrupted in a unique once-in-a-century sort of manner. And I think the intense psychological shockwave of that, for some people, they've got the strength to be able to deal with this and move on with their lives. A lot of other people got lost and frightened. And they got sucked into, via social media, you know, hate algorithms and crazy algorithms that have filled them with a sense of understanding of the world and all these Mm. conspiracies which they can hold on to. And I think that we're going to see more of this as we go into the recession. Yeah, equally, there's some nuttiness on the other side. We, We saw an official document from an official government agency that branded the platform as part of a disinformation network yeah. this week. Yeah. Yeah. So there's been yeah. craziness Look, on the other side too. Absolutely. Hang on, just give Ron a chat. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. No, Sean, and you're right to acknowledge that because, listen, I sat and heard... I, I've, I've still got papers that, you know... I'll, I read one paper and three months later I read another paper and questions that we were asking of... Um, you know, a certain gentleman who was all over the media, um, uh, where he was giving us one answer, and then three months later, he's making recommendations that are totally the opposite and match perfectly with the questions we asked, but which he dismissed three months before. So the state and the Ministry of Health did not help itself at all, and it created distrust and mistrust. And when you create distrust and mistrust, that opens a door for other people to fill that gap and and I just think that in time, some of the questions that platforms, you know, people such as yourself, had been rightfully asking 
will actually, the, there'll be more evidence made of it. What we forget is that COVID lasted, what, two years? Yeah. The post-mortem's going to last 100 years. And as yeah. more and more evidence starts to come to fore as to who actually died of COVID and who did not, as opposed to the numbers that were used to inflame the fear, yeah. I think people's credibility will put be put squarely on yeah, the line. Yeah, but, but and hindsight's still always do, 2020, isn't it, Ron? That's, well, it, it, hindsight is, but it actually will... Here's the thing. It will reinforce the mistrust and the views that certain have, people have if the evidence shows that people were misled. All right. you know, and that's the danger. Well, going forward to another pandemic, what is essential is that people have belief in and in trust, trust, yeah. uh, trust their officials to handle it appropriately. If in the post-mortem, not this Royal Commission, but another one and beyond that, it's, it's revealed that actually people weren't told entirely the truth and Pfizer didn't exactly tell everyone everything. And actually, you know, there have been consequences. That will make it worse yeah. for the next pandemic. Yeah. Absolutely uh, worse. All right. All right, guys, look, I want to move on to another issue. And, and I'll be honest, because, you know, some people have taken against the platform and think we're kind of some sort of weird conspiracy uh, racist outfit. And honestly, some of the stuff we've been getting back and our producers get back when they ring and ask for interviews is just, just laughable. But I know that Wellington's new mayor, who seems very reluctant to come on the platform now and whose press people have been less than helpful with us, because she is basically a Green Mayor of Wellington, Tori Whanau. She used to work for James Shaw, and all her mates are in the Green Party, and the Greens have a blanket ban on talking to us. But Tori Whanau has also come out and said, there's been an uptick, and that's a um, disinformation project word, an uptick in nasty emails against her. So she's implemented a new security thing where she's not going to use a mayoral car. She'll travel in an unmarked car with basically a bodyguard. Now, Ron, I couldn't look at anything at this as anything but a bit of Me Too victim playing because surely, and I know you're a man with, A, you're a mayor, and B, you're a man with some experience of close protection and security as you work as a soldier and a soldier of fortune in some cases. Surely the one thing about Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> Bang on the nail. Anything more to be said? <laughs> you don't, you know. And uh, the last thing you do is start uh, you know, expressing any concerns you have. I mean, you just get on, take the measures necessary. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, Sean. Every one of us who puts his, our hands up for public service knows. We know. And we know that... Um, in this day and age with social media, there is always the potential uh, for people to become inflamed and radicalised and to to want uh, and to take exception to the views that, that we espouse. And, you know, I'll defend the right of Martin to say whatever he likes. And, and in fact, I've put on a uniform to do exactly that. Don't need to agree with him, but I defend his right. And he has the right to say, say that, you know, too. So I guess where politicians need to be circ a little circumspect is it's one thing to be ranting and raving on yourself on social media when you're trying to get elected. It's something totally different when you assume it. For some yeah. you should think yeah. about that. Martin, this is it. here. This is Tory trying to be like Jacinda and, oh, look at all the people who hate me. You've got to protect me. Isn't it? I... I have a different take on it. This is the direct bloody price that we are paying for Trevor Mallard's inability to de-escalate what happened on Parliament law. Oh, do you think she's got a legitimate year. concern? I think she has. I think she and many other elected representatives right now are in a, uh, a world where this kind of the very radicalisation that Ron was talking about and that loneliness that is forcing and feeding and fueling that radicalisation can erupt in weird ways. And this goes this goes back, and I've been making yeah, this Yeah, but I get this, Martin. Here. Look, I, I, I posted yeah. last night. Yeah, right. Listen you to this. As well. yeah. Listen to yeah, this, what I got last that. night. Maybe you should F off back to your <coughs> WANK dungeon in your mum's basement. Now, I am not thinking the person who sent that message to me on Twitter is entirely sane. We have fed this radicalisation. Malad is responsible for the feeding of that and the mishandling of that parliamentary situation at the beginning of this year. And this is the cost and price that we're paying. 
Well, yep. I, Martin, I applaud you for that. No, no, the only thing I could think of is that uh, maybe he was so damn good at his job, he should have been made an ambassador, you know? Clearly, he has the diplomatic skills required for the job, Jacinda. What an absolute joke. But never mind. Now, look, yep. I think you're right. We're, we're, we're talking preaching to the converted here, but I will come back to that point. And I'd, I'd go one step further than that, Sean. I think, you know, anyone who assumes public office, I mean, it wasn't so long ago I sat on the Parliamentary Security Committee and we dealt with the reports of vexatious um, constituents and people who, you know, we had an MP, going back in time, we had an MP stabbed with a screwdriver and we had we had all sorts mm. of things. And, and I remember sitting on that committee where people were talking about putting glass wall up from the balcony to the ceiling to stop people throwing stuff over and there was a lot of scoffing and poo-hooing and oh it's not our parliament that's not the way we operate and that and then wasn't long after that some protesters got in and threw leaflets over the balcony and when we were talking about that incident i said well just imagine if they're throwing acid yeah yeah that's you know, right so you know, we, we take a lot of stuff for granted and we don't think about it too much. But there's, mm. there's something, if you're going to be up in public office, um, you know, and God, I've been in New Zealand, I was a New Zealand first MP for what, six terms? Yeah. I know what, yeah. I know what hate is like. Yeah. I, Labor doesn't yeah. have the franchise on hate mail. Sorry, yeah. don't feel sorry for yourself and go whining to everyone. Comes with a job. Take, get your assessments done, get some professionals in to give you some advice. And you don't tell people what your new security measures. And don't tell measures. people about <laughs> it. And, and if you're worried about your mayoral card, don't have one. Yeah, well, that's what she's done. You don't have to have one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't right. have a mayoral car. Well, I'm amazed that they don't have a mayoral Uber, seeing it's basically a Green Party thing in Wellington oh. now. You two, can I say, I think we've found a little bit of broadcasting chemistry and gold between you two. And I am going to declare, <laughs> Martin, you'll hate this, I think Ron is the winner of this match, and oh, we'll have to have a rematch. I'll call for a rebound. And we'll have to have a return <laughs> bout at some stage. Our texts have gone off. Thank you both for really entering into the spirit of Free Speech Fridays. That's exactly how we should roll. Have a great weekend, yeah. guys. Thank you so much uh, for your contribution today. That is Free Speech Fridays Cheers with Ron Mark, Martin Bradbury. It's